Hi guys, this is a bit of a different video from me today. So instead of showing you a hunt, I'm actually going to show you what I do to this old 1944 Australian penny to turn it looking from this into something a little bit more legible. So first and foremost, I'm making out what parts I can still see on the coin. I can see the word penny down the bottom here. I can see part of the outline of a kangaroo in the centre. I'm just using a standard toothpick here. I'm sure you've got one in your cupboard. Now, instead of using the pointy section of the toothpick, I'm actually laying it down on its side and I'm just starting to gently rub just the parts of the coin that are raised. So not the backing of the coin, just the bits of the kangaroo here for starters. I'll be working on the lettering as well. You want to go gentle with this, guys, because you don't want to be rubbing off the lower sections. We want to allow a little bit of contrast so that we can see those details once more without taking away the original characteristics of the coin. Now with this particular coin, the word penny was quite raised, so as you can see it's quite easy for me to bring up this detail with just a quick little rub of the side of the toothpick. However, what I did notice is when I tried to revive the year, which is over where I'm working now, um, it was not as raised, so I ended up actually taking away some of the detail from the lower section of the coin. So that's not what I want to do. So what I've done in this particular circumstance, I've changed to the pointy end of the toothpick. Now only do this if you know where the raised part of the design should be. I actually do have another penny off the camera here that I'm making comparison just to make sure that I am doing the detail in the correct location. So I do know this is a 1944 penny. I'm just outlining that year a little bit better so that I can see it. Stopping to have a bit of a review. And now I'm going to the front of the kangaroo, which, just like the year, is not as raised. So I've got to go really, really slow here, guys. Slow is key. Take your time with it. This is absolutely not a race. And now I'm moving on to the word Australia, which is located at the top of this coin. Just initially doing a little bit of a sweep with the side of the toothpick. So I'm going to come back to the word Australia. I'm not too happy with how it's showing up. So I decided I'd do a different part of the coin. This time I'm just running the toothpick around the outer edges. Again, just providing a little bit more contrast, making the coin a bit prettier, I suppose. So here I'm just checking my progress, seeing if I'm happy with what I've done so far. I'm pretty happy with the word penny in the year. Again, the word Australia, I still want to do a little bit more work on later. So this time I'm now moving to the front of the kangaroo. Now here, the detail's not as obvious. So I am referring to my sample coin that's off camera. Just seeing if I can work out where the kangaroo's face is, but also the angle the ear is on. And just doing my best guess here with the pointed edge of the toothpick. Slowly, slowly. I have to be really, really careful in this spot. Okay, I think it's time to go back to the word Australia. So I'm starting with the letter S here because it's one of the most prominent. Just using the pointed edge of my toothpick, referring to my sample coin and tracing it out as best I can without going outside of the edges of the letters. All right, so far so good. The details are slowly coming back to life. I'm still not happy with the word Australia, but I've decided I'm still going to put that off. <laughs> Save the worst till last, if you will. I'm going to work on the other side now. So on this particular coin, we've got King George VI. I can see him reasonably clearly in the light. However, there's no contrast on this coin. So if you're looking at it right now, you really can't make out a lot of the detail. So I just want to make those letters and the king a little bit more visible. Just bring a bit of detail back to the coin. Whoops, while I was focusing on doing what I was doing, I actually slid the coin off the camera. Sorry about that, guys. But you can see I'm just doing a really broad side sweep with the toothpick at this point, bringing up the major details first before I swap to the pointier side just to do the finer detail. So 
So when you first start this process on the bust half of a coin, the face is going to look really weird. It's going to look almost skeletal um, because with a face on a coin, there's quite often a lot of recessed points. So things like the jaw, uh, inside the ear, you know, various facial details around the eyes. We don't want to get into all of those tiny little crevices, but there will be some spots that we will want to rub with the toothpick. Again, just to make them a little bit brighter than the darkest counterparts on the coin. Now I like to give the coin a gentle rub with my fingers before I review, just to let that dust settle that I've stirred up with the toothpick. So that's looking pretty good so far. I think I will come back to George. I'll probably fill in his cheek a little bit more, but for now, I'm just going around the edge of the coin and I'm gonna work on the lettering a little bit more. So not all of the letters were still visible on this coin. There was a section worn completely away. So I've just done a quick going over of what I can, a bit of a rub, and then tilting it in the light just to see what glows and what doesn't, what I might need to continue working on. So I'm gonna move from here to my wrap up, but then I'll show you a photo after I've spent a few more minutes on the coin. Alrighty, welcome to my, um, I guess you call it a wrap up. So I've since that video you just watched, I've spent another maybe five to 10 minutes going over that same coin with the toothpick, just bringing up the letters a little bit more than what you saw in the video. Um, also having another go at Georgie boy on the back here. So there were some details I couldn't bring up at all. Uh, let me find a good example to compare for you, one here. So for example, his name down here, those letters have worn completely away in this section. So. There were a couple that I could estimate just by comparing to this coin when I was doing my detailing. Um, you can see the O there I've managed to restore. I can kind of see the G and the E now, um, but I won't try and fill in letters that simply aren't there, guys. It'll end up just looking really scrappy. Um, I wanted to compare it, just take a moment to compare it to a tumbled coin. So this coin's in very similar condition to the penny we've just restored. Uh, so worn down to the same extent. Now you can kind of see that while a tumbled coin does look nice and shiny, you do lose a lot of that finer detail by tumbling because you're removing the dirt um, and the patina from all of these little crevices. And that way you can't really see a raised surface from a flat one. So if I tilt this up on an angle, I mean, you can barely make out any of that detail there if I tilt it up. It's nice and shiny though. But um, yeah, look, as far as a, being a, a valuable coin, I would have lost any value that was there. Um, not that there was any value with this one to begin with, but just a word of warning to those looking to clean their coins. If it's something that's potentially a, a valuable date or something you would consider selling down the track, um, don't touch it. Just leave it as is, um, as much as you may be tempted. Um, maybe just play with the, the cheaper coins the ones you don't think you'll sell down the track, that sort of thing. Um, always check the values before you have a play with them. Um, yeah, so comparing it to a few more pennies I've got here. So all of these pennies have been ones that I've detected over the last few months. Uh, most of them are beach finds. All of these are beach. This one is land, so I'll get to this one in a moment. So as you can see, beach coins they really don't have the detail that land coins do. Um, they do tend to have been tossed around in, in sand and water for decades. So they've worn down. I mean, sand brushing past a coin every single day, that's basically a sandpaper effect. And that's why we're losing a lot of these details here. Um, you know, and you'll get these horrible little marks that you really just can't lift off. Um, that one's probably been tumbled a good hour or so and it, it's still got gunk on it. Um, so yeah, not a lot that can be done to save some of the coins here. Sometimes you get lucky. So this one was actually trapped under a rock. Um, I haven't uh, tumbled this one for long at all, just enough to get the muck off. Um, you can see these ones have gone a bit longer. 
but it pretty much came out of the ground as is so I won't do too much more to that because I think that one looks stunning um, this one is a beach one that I haven't cleaned up at all so got a bit of muck on it um, with this one it is a, another common one so I probably will uh, tumble this one just because I don't think I'll be able to get this grit off by hand without leaving some pretty significant marks on the coin so I'll do it with that one which then brings me to my land find so this guy I pulled out of the soil now you can see this one has all of its details on it still like even the the designer mark over here there's a small kg above the tail it's the artist's initials things like that um, this one looks as good as the day it was dropped pretty much so the other thing I like about this one is that over the years it has developed an absolutely beautiful green patina on both sides it's pretty even on both see how nice does that look guys so I won't clean this one at all it's literally had a, a bit of water a um, bit of a rinse that's it I won't do anything abrasive to it um, that one's just going to stay in my collection as is um, and as far as a, a, a coin valuer would go they'd much prefer to see a coin in this condition than tumbled um, so yeah I guess just a word of caution but also just showing you the difference between land and beach detecting and, and what you can really expect to get out of it um, I hope you've learned something with the old um, toothpick trick that I've shown you in this video uh, by all means have a go on a coin that you're um, pick a coin that you're not going to get upset if you accidentally go too far with that would just be my word of warning just find something cheap something common um, something you're not planning to sell down the track have a play let me know how you go if you enjoyed this by all means please do the usual like comment if you haven't subscribed already I would love to have you following my channel um, I'm gonna get straight back into detecting for the next video have no fear <laughs> I will catch you on the next hunt. Thanks for watching, guys.